Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with MysticGenMara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And today, tonight, whenever you happen to be seeing this, I would like to offer your elemental energy reading for the month of December of 2024 for the element of water. Water covers the zodiac signs of Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. So we're going to talk to our fishies today. Um, if you are interested in having getting a natal chart, there is a link in the description. It's not a, affiliated or anything like that. Uh, it's just a really good product. It gives you the base 12 houses with all the little planets and everything. And then there's 10 to 20 pages of a description of what all that means. Um, it also gives you your elemental alignment. If you're interested as to why I read for the elements instead of the zodiac, that's also in a video linked in the description. With that, we'll whoops, <laughs> get started here. And we'll look at the overall month with the I Ching to start with. And I cast the hexagram before starting the video. And for water for December, we have number 60. This is the hexagram of restraint. Restraint equals success. It is wrong to persist in harsh restraint. So restraint is a good thing, but denying everything, which is that harsh restraint, is not going to be beneficial. So there is uh, this energy coming forward the month of December, finding some balance with stuff, saying no to the things that probably aren't the best decisions, but also saying yes to the things that are actually feeding the soul and helping yourself and those around you. Um, Where are we at? So we'll start with our foundational line here. And it is, he goes not forth from outer gates and courtyards of his home, no error. They're saying that this is not a time to go out and be hyper social. December is going to be social enough on its own, but it doesn't mean to go out every single night. Take the time, make plans accordingly, but it's saying he goes not forth from the outer gates and courtyards of his home, no error. So you don't always have to go out just because someone has a Christmas party or someone has an event. Pick and choose the ones that you want to go to. They're saying that it's not necessary to be hyper social this month. So our second place line, he goes not forth from the inner gates and courtyards of his home misfortune. It's not saying stay home completely, <laughs> but pick and choose what actually you choose to get involved with. The With having your foundation saying probably not, it's best to not go out all the time. But the second one is, but don't stay home for the whole month. So go be social but you don't have to be social and say yes to everything if you have that work one where you're like I'm just not really into that work one then don't but you've got some friends that are like hey we're gonna do this thing at our house go for it so it's one of those things where you know find the balance again uh, your third place line is sighing over an apparent lack of restraint no error there's no harm if you happen to do something you're like I should not have done that that's regretful and you don't have to be regretful. It's just basically paying attention to your time. It's I'm hearing that December is going to be very, very valuable with time for our water family. So definitely do the things that you feel very drawn to. But if you're not, then don't. But don't beat yourself up if you did something and you're like, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Live and learn. <laughs> so our fourth place, where are we at? There line peaceful restraint success you can casually say no thank you to something this month and it's not a big deal people this month especially thankfully are going to be okay with someone turning down an invitation because there's enough going on that they're not even more than likely going to question why and they're saying with the peaceful restraint it's just saying oh no i'm busy that night or i you know what i've been work's been a little hectic so i'm just going to kind of chill that week those are acceptable responses and that's what they're saying is you don't have to do everything and just being calm and matter of fact with your responses that's going to lead you in way better uh, leave you in way better states so our fifth place line voluntary restraint good fortune advancing now wins praise when it says voluntary restraint it's you're choosing what you say yes to and what you say no to and by doing that, it's actually going to be your biggest benefit. Really checking in with your intuition. If, you're, if your mind is going, I don't know which to choose, what does your gut say? What does your heart say? That's 
especially for water, that is going to be your guiding principle more so than really anything else. So really tap into that energy as you're going through this month and advance in the ways that you are inspired to, that your intuition guides you towards. It doesn't mean everything has to be a yes. It's probably better to say no to a few of those. But when you follow your instincts and your intuition, that's where you're going to be led to the right things. So our capstone here, number six, painful restraint, persistence brings misfortune. However, regret will cease later. Do not force a situation. If your intuition is saying, don't do it, your gut instinct is saying, don't do it, and you have somebody else going, oh, come on, you never do anything with us, blah, 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 blah. Understand that if you do happen to go against your intuition, it may not be the best option this month. This month, things could be a little bit testy if you push against that too much. It's saying that over time, you're going to give up the, the uh, resistance to it. You're not going to, the regret's going to go, okay, well, that was a mistake. I should have learned. And this month is really saying, you know your gut instincts, you know your intuitions. Follow those. If you mess up, how can you do better in the next one? Is that, and that's all they're asking. It's not, not a horrible month for our water signs, but definitely a pay attention to your instincts and really tap into your intuition as you go forward, because that is definitely going to uh, grant you what you need this month. So now to, to bounce into our tarot and get a little more detail on that. I read um, week by week, so there's approximately four and a half weeks in December, so we'll just do a five-week reading. Each week, I look at a guide or guardian, a guide to help you through the week, someone to ask for support, uh, or a guardian that's going to help deflect or help you work through any issues that come up. A message from Source, which is a positive affirmation, some support, um, a little bit of confidence building, however that works for you, and then a lesson or challenge from the tarot, where we look at a lesson that's coming up ready to be worked on or there could be something unseen coming in as a challenge that week so and i read one two three four if the weeks happen to go two four five one however it works for you uh, that the messages are being brought through however you guys use them is up to you so uh, we'll get started here your first week's guide or guardian is number 21 with merlin the dragon this first week Find your magic is the very first thing that comes to mind. This is a week to really tap into that ability to manifest the miracles, manifest the miraculous. Water, you as a rule are very intuitive, also very magical, and you have this ability to create things in a way that none of the other signs do. You are able to work something, and sometimes it's so subtle that the outside world doesn't even know that you're actually fixing the situation. So when you work with Merlin, you're really working with a very ancient and great uh, mystic power that is going to help you solve the problems that you may be having or help you develop a better way to manifest the dreams, goals, and ambitions that you're working towards. So this first week is really about getting clear because there's a lot of potential coming in with that. Your message from source is competition, summon courage, and self-confidence. When you tap into that metaphysical energy that Merlin brings, it's going to bring up a lot of things. It may help you work through some shadow work. It might help you see things a little bit clearer. When you start to see things a little bit clearer, you might look at yourself and go, oh, what is that? Oh, I should not be doing this. What I'm hearing is the competition is with yourself. You're not competing with somebody else. You're competing with this and you're competing with your heart. So when you look at things from that perspective, how can you improve when these two are fighting? <laughs> because your heart and your brain and your uh, yeah brain will always want to fight at some point. And this competition is summoning the courage and the self-confidence to do the right thing, even if you're not quite ready for it. And with Merlin the dragon coming in, it's saying we have this ability to create this week so don't let the shadow win find ways to work around it you are water is exceptionally intuitive and very much about doing things for the right reasons so tap into that energy and really move forward with confidence in this first week of december 
Your lesson or challenge from the tarot is the King of Wands. Don't get overconfident just because you've been there, done that, and your passion project has been completed. So I don't have anything else to do. Wrong. <laughs> Air or water. Just because one passion project has been completed, what Merlin and competition are bringing forward this first week is be ready for the new potential. There's so much open being opened to you in this moment that you don't want to just walk away from it. And with the king of uh, wands, that's a very much fire energy, which is your opposite. That is saying, I've been there, I've done that, I have mastered it, I have all of this knowledge, little ego kicking up there as well, but it's really saying for you as a lesson or a challenge, do not be deceived by the fact that, yeah, you've been there, you've done that, now what? What's next? So the it's a little bit of a lesson and a challenge to don't get too complacent with the fact that, yeah, you've achieved a lot, but where are you headed next? So let's take a peek at the second week. First week was a little intense there. Um, our second week, Skyed or Guardian, is number seven, and that is the Magic and Manifestation Energy Dragons. This is really, the first week you were understanding the potential is coming forward, and that's where that resistance um, comes in with the other, with the I Ching. What are you going to create? What are you going to say yes to, and what are you saying no to? The magic is the potential, the manifestation is the result. So you have this energy, this first two weeks especially coming in to help you create the next level you're not going to be able to do that if you're out you know going from christmas party to christmas party or from event to event where you're just not taking the time for your own manifestations your own energies your own manifestations and they're also saying don't drain your energy going out to do all these things when your home your spouse your children if you have them or your pets also need some of the attention and that's going to help actually recharge you the social events are notorious around this time of the year for draining people and making them feel more tired so pick and choose the right thing the magic and manifestation the magic is the ability to, to create things the manifestation is the actual creation that steps out into the light of day and that's what's coming up the second week is really Work with the energies of manifestation and pay attention to your instincts. They're really being loud on the instinct thing this month. So, <laughs> um, and with water, you kind of live by your instincts anyway. So this is just a good reminder for that. Your second week's lesson or challenge from, or not lesson or challenge, good grief. <laughs> your message from source is friendship, nurturing your relationships. And this is where the magic and manifestation are coming in to remind you you're the one that creates your reality. But with friendship, this is where you're getting into that energy of say yes to the things that feed your soul. Say no to the things that you're kind of repulsed by. And that's like with the I Ching. There's certain things, say yes. There's other ones, don't do that. <laughs> and that's what they're saying is pick the things that are the most that feed you the most and your friendship this month is going to be exceptionally what you're craving it could be the friendship and time with your spouse it could be that bestie that you really haven't had a lot of time because you've been busy they've been busy and all of a sudden there's this phone call to like come over for dinner and appetizers or a movie or whatever or cookie decorating that's something they want to get back into doing too but um, that's another one that people do as a social thing and those are the things that you can say yes to because there's not a lot of expectations. It's go there, have fun, wear ugly sweaters, you know, do that kind of stuff. That's where the friendships coming in the second week is really you're doing the work to manifest. You have this energy coming forward to help you manifest. That's the magic part of it. But do the things that help your friendship, your inner energy, and that uh, healthy growth is what I'm hearing. So your lesson or challenge is the queen of swords the illusions that are popping up because well i'm expected to go to that because it is such an important thing this is the illusions breaker the queen of swords is saying don't lie to me don't even try you're not going to win it's the <laughs> the epitome of the um the mom that is waiting for you when you come home after being out too late and you're thinking you're sneaking in and you creak the door open and she's like so where were you because the the divine mother always knows 
which is where our physical mothers have gotten that talent. Uh, and so we've got this energy of don't let the illusions get in the way. Don't lie to yourself saying, no, I really want to go do this. But your intuition and your gut instinct is saying, screaming at you not to. So really pay attention to that energy the second week. It's going to be the challenge week is what I'm hearing because you have this positive pulse for magic and manifestation to do everything and get this stuff going and uh, build and however it manifests your dreams, your goals, your ambitions. And then there's this friendship card saying, you know, it's all right to go and do something fun, but don't get too wrapped up in, well, I have to because you don't have to do anything. <laughs> and don't think you have to do anything. That's just not how this works. Christmas is about giving and being joyful, not about being obligated and stressed. So, and that doesn't always work out that way, but that's what it's supposed to be. Um, so our third week is number, I'm horrible with Roman numerals, 19, Crystal. So the Crystal Dragon wants you to be able to see things from a clearer perspective. The first two weeks, um, Dragon Energies were helping you build a manifestation, working with those divine energies that are coming in, the ones that you have access to, allowing you to manifest more clearly. The Crystal Dragon is saying, let's look at things from the broader perspective. Let's get you focusing in on exactly what it is you want. We're moving into the new year. We have Yule coming up. We're building this energy where the solar deity is going to be reborn on Yule. The new year, if you look by, go by the Gregorian calendar. We're all setting ourselves up for what's coming next. Water takes you a little bit more time to get things processing because water is a little bit long, slower to boil, but when it does, look out. <laughs> so the crystal dragon is saying, you're getting things set up. You're starting the momentum but let's get crystal clear on what it is you're actually building. Whether it is a dream, a goal, ambition, starting that new family, maybe popping the question to that special someone, however it manifests, getting very clear on what it is that you want out of this month, even in this third week, so you're even halfway through, it's still that reminder, make sure what you're asking for is really what you're asking for. Your message from source, is the Archangel Raphael, provider of healing for mind, body, and spirit. When you get crystal clear, it allows you to look past the illusions of, I'm fine, I'm totally all right. And your body's like, no, we're not. I need food, I need water, give me a vitamin. <laughs> and that's what we're getting with this third week is when you start becoming crystal clear on what it is you're after, what it is your goals, dreams, and ambitions actually look like. It also is showing you Okay, that's where that's where you want to be the steps to that point you might need to do some healing work whether it's energy healing working with your aura and your energy fields chakra balancing or maybe fixing little dietary issues I know that's difficult between Halloween and New Year's because there's so much food <laughs> just period uh, but it's allowing yourself to have a little excess but also sticking to a pretty healthier diet um, and working with a healthier mindset, December, January are rough. There's that seasonal affective disorder or whatever they call it. What, seasonal depression is what I, we always grew up with it. And those are th real things. And that's stuff that Archangel Raphael can help you process as to what's going on. Then you also have that crystal clear dragon saying, okay, this is not who you are. This is a temporary thing. Let's process this out. And so you've got really good healing energy in this third week. And it's also about being truthful and honest with yourself and making sure you're not, you know, allowing illusions to pop in because they like to do that. We water signs do not want to be in reality. We want to be elsewhere. So <laughs> your uh, lesson or challenge from the tarot is the two of pentacles. There's a little bit of naivety. There's a hint of rebellious attitude is what I'm getting here. So it's definitely you want to keep that ego in check. You don't want to be like, no, I am perfectly fine. Everything is all right as, you know, your world burns. That's not what they're recommending. Do the work with the Crystal Dragons and Archangel Raphael this third week. Do the healing work. Be open and honest. Raphael also is really good with communication. Be open and honest with yourself. See what needs to happen to reach those goals, to get really clear on what it is that you're hunting for. But don't let your ego get in the way and be like, I am so good. I don't need that. 
yeah, you probably do. We all do. So keep your ego in check this third week. Because when you start to see, oh, I need to work on that. That's not always the easiest thing to do. But that's what they're saying. So <laughs> let's take a peek at our fourth week. Guide or Guardian for December Water. This deck is being uh, a little grumpy today. There we go. And we have... <laughs> uh, universe is being funny. Number 26, The Healer. So basically what I'm hearing is the middle of the month is the time to do the deeper work, the healing work. And this is where you say yes to the things only if your intuition is saying yes. If your intuition says no, don't do it. Um, but with the healer, it's not just about your healing. You're also becoming a beacon, beacon for healing for others as well. The second week was, or the second week, third week was all about you doing the healing work. But this fourth week, I'm getting the impression that this is about sharing that healing energy, that healing light, whether that is through praying for others, whether it's through, um, doing energy work for friends or family or just overall sending positive vibes into the planet as a whole. This fourth week is really about spreading the healing that you have started within yourself and allowing it to ripple outwards to others. Your message from source is dragon discovering your courage. It takes courage to step up and say, I know I am not perfect and I am working my best to improve every single day. As I heal myself, I heal the world. As the world responds, I can move to a higher state and heal even faster, allowing the world to heal with me. And that's the energy that they're wanting to bring forward in this fourth week is you're working into this very powerful healing state because you've gotten clear on what it is you're after. You've gotten really focused on the fact that there's a lot of manifestation and magical energy working forward in this month of December for our water energies. And so with that, coming into the fourth week, the message from source is now that you are in this state where you're starting to heal even faster, we're always going through healing. So this isn't like, oh, you healed last month, you can heal this month. We're always working through these processes. But this fourth week of December I'm hearing is going to be, could be a little intense, but it's going to be intense in the best way possible because what you have already started and been doing for the last year is actually starting to ripple out into the world around you at this point. So you don't have to pay attention to it. Just be aware that you as an example and you as an energy being as above, so below, you are actually affecting the world around you, which is cool, a little intimidating, but still cool. Uh, our fourth week's lesson or challenge is the seven of chalices. Take time for self care. They're saying that this is not just about projecting for others. This month is really doing a lot of inner work, setting yourself up for success. This fourth week, because of its intensity, even though it's going to be good intensity, don't forget the self-care. Take the time to really look inside yourself to really do the things that bring you joy, whether that is quietly baking at home, whether that's taking a nice relaxing bath, curling up in your favorite fuzzy slippers and your best novel, it doesn't matter what kind, whatever novel you read, and just enjoying a couple of hours during this fourth week, doing the things that feed you. Everything this month is really about inner work, outer work, setting yourself up for success, but don't forget, and this is a lesson this fourth week, to take care of just being at peace, just finding the reason to be happy. Finding that reason to smile. Snuggle with your loved one if you're with a partner. Watch that goofy Christmas mu movie or marathon them like I do um, <laughs> when, with your kids or with your family. Just enjoy the little things that do have nothing to do with work, that have nothing to do with effort. This fourth week, it's going to be intense is what I'm hearing. Good intense, just intense. Um, but don't forget, have fun. Do something relaxing enjoy life we're here to live it to the fullest of our abilities and that's a reminder in this fourth week so our last week fifth week's guide or guardian is number 33 the hern dragon this is going to be working with divine masculine energy i just want to check the book because i'm not super familiar with all of the dragons in this deck 
do 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 Oops, wrong direction. Helps if you know how to read Roman numerals. <laughs> um, so, this is an earth dragon. He's connected to nature and everything within the natural world. Rocks, earth, trees, plants, animals, birds. He advises us what to do, that we would do well to remember that we are as we are two part of the seasons, the earth rotation and the mother of Gaia herself. He reminds us that everything is cy cyclical and draws our attention to how out of sync we are with our earth rhythm. Um, even our internal body clocks are not the way they should be. Uh, <laughs> uh, we couldn't imagine life without our smartphones and all the electronics that we just adore, you know, like the one you're watching this on. Um, but it's good to find ways to reconnect to earth to gaia ground yourself and especially after that fourth week's intensity being reminded that as above so below the earth cycles so do we nature has her hyper periods and her quiet periods so do we <laughs> and when we look at it from that perspective um, and i'm not a dietitian this is something i've observed when we look at the different diets there's a couple of them um, that are very specific to seasonal eating. Like in the winter time, you're eating your root crops, your cabbages and things like that. But in the summer, you don't touch those because you're eating salads, you're eating fruits, you're eating vegetables. And it's um, the meat varies from your season to season, depending on how heavy it is, what kind, how it's cooked, all that stuff. Because when we tap into our seasonal cycles, we know, especially, and this is no non-judgment, this is what it is, Men from spring to fall tend to be way more active and way more energetic. That's the time where the solar god is at its highest. But from fall to spring through the winter, men tend to be a lot more quiet, a lot more reserved because the solar deity is in the underworld recharging and regrowing. The women, female energy, cycles monthly. But when you look at it from those perspectives, you can see how those cycles truly affect us nature has a cycle pattern just like that and when we're not grounding into we're not anchoring into the heart of Gaia to really touch those seasonal shifts and changes we're dis we disconnect we don't realize that the world spins in a very unique way and we aren't connecting to it which puts us at odds with nature odds with ourselves at times so you end up with this uh, imbalance that starts to show up. What Hearn is, what I'm hearing from Hearn is ground back into Gaia. The eight primary Sabbaths in the traditional calendars are great ways to help you connect more fully into those energies. That's why a lot of us will do uh, YouTube and in real life, and when you look at the Wiccan cultures, the Druidic cultures, a lot of the pagan traditions, they will celebrate multiple celebrations through the year, but the eight Sabbaths are so valuable because it helps us reconnect to those cyclical patterns of life and existence. And this last week of December, as the Gregorian calendar comes to a close, he really wants you to understand everything has a pattern, everything has a cycle. Yes, it is winter, it is the quiet time everything is settled down things are not as active as they were it's okay to take a break it's okay to rest it's okay to tap back into that grounded and anchored point so let's see what your less uh message from source is trust your intuition when you start really connecting back into the heart of the planet, when you tap back into Gaia, your intuition, oddly enough, spikes. You start to be able to trust your gut instincts because you're connecting into the cycles of nature as a whole. It allows you, when you can start to really bring yourself back into that alignment, it opens the door up as well. As you're connecting into Gaia, you're connecting into the heart of the Creator. When those things open up, that channel connects. Your intuition becomes so second nature, so natural that you don't even have to think about it. This month is a little all over the place for water because you start off setting yourself up with a lot of potential energy, setting those manifestations, getting the magic flowing, 
you're doing some inner work and some inner healing which is rippling out in the middle of the month the end of the month is a little more serious a little more stoic but it's definitely saying you are as much of the part of the magic as anything else water your emotions your ability to create um, others would say that you are way too far off in la la land or dream world but it's that ability to access that that creates this magical field that you're in and with that connecting back into the cycles of nature when to plant when to harvest all of those things there is this a beautiful energy and magic that's coming forward is what i'm hearing so this fifth week it's going to be a quieter week it's a re kind of a recovery week and a s settling down because the winter is here it's time to quiet things it's not over things aren't done you're not out of the <laughs> karmic cycle yet but it's definitely a time to start to reflect on how things have been in the past and where we're headed in the future so your lesson or challenge from the tarot is the six of pentacles do not give up on gratitude she's kind of given up she's like oh i've got this i've got flowers i've got all the rich stuff this is purple if it doesn't show up quite well like i just have all these things it's just i don't have what i want what do you want this fourth or this fifth week is really saying be grateful for where you're at the good things and the bad the bad is there to teach you lessons the good things are saying hey you learned the lesson so as we go forward into december and through december take the positive aspect of resistance follow your intuition really check in with your inner guidance as you go through this month some things might look like rainbows and butterflies on the surface but butterflies also like to land on poo so <laughs> things don't not always uh, are not always what they seem and oil on water looks like rainbows does not mean you want to drink it so follow your intuition really ground yourself back into the heart of Gaia follow the seasonal growth if you're not familiar with that start to really meditate on understanding that that's a good way to really connect back in connect in with Yule connect in with Candlemas each of the eight holidays are the shifting of the yearly clock and that allows you to start to understand that cycle a little bit better things we've forgotten as we've gotten into our industrialized world which technology is great but keep it in balance so <laughs> We will let you guys go. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, drop a like, comment, let me know your thoughts, feelings, opinions, even constructive criticism, as long as we're respectful. It's really all we can ask for in today's world. Be safe out there. Have a great month of December, and I will see you in the next video.